I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today I would like to continue talking about circles. But apparently, uh, the further we move down the geometry road, the more objects we are familiar with. And uh, circles actually are very interesting objects, and there are many very nice theorems about uh, circles. And uh, as you remember, the uh, main point is basically developing your creativity, your logic, your abilities to rigorously uh, think about certain statements which you are making. And, uh, well, circles is just adding one more object into this language, into this universe of different objects which, which we are talking about, which we are using, uh, just as a brain exercise, if you wish. So. A bunch of other small uh, uh, brain exercises, or mini theorems actually, which, which I'm more officially uh, calling. Um, most of them are about circles, but obviously some other elements uh, which we have already learned will be involved in this. So this is about circles, uh, mini theorems, it's number two. Um, I have more, actually. All right, so let's just go one by one. Um, measure of an angle formed by two chords. OK, so we have two chords which are intersecting uh, inside a circle. So let's call it A. B, A prime, and B. OK. Is equal to half the sum of measures of central angles. OK, so we have these angles. And we are interested in measuring this particular angle. Uh, so this is the center of a circle. And the theorem states that any one of these angles, and they are, by the way, um, congruent to each other because uh, they are vertical. So any one of those is equal to half the sum of these two central angles. So this is the center of a, square, uh, of a circle. So this particular arc and this particular arc, um, I think I better take it to this way. Well, okay. okay. So this particular arc, AB, and this particular arc, a prime, B prime, are supported by, are supporting these uh, two vertical angles, which are equal to each other. And these two arcs support these two vertical angles. So the statement of this theorem is that the measure of any angle which is formed by two intersecting chords, let's say this angle, is actually half of the measure of corresponding central angles um, which are supported by the same arcs. So if you take this arc and its central angle, this arc and its central angle, then the half sum of these two central angles is equal to this. All right, now how can we prove it? Uh, you probably should remember that if you have an inscribed angle, then we have proved that it's half the measure of a corresponding central angle which is supported by the same arc. So we will use this theorem in this particular case. So we know about inscribed angle, now this is a more complicated picture of two chords actually crossing each other. 
but the theorem is, you know, in a way, it's very, very much in tune with, with this one. So in this case, we have two different arcs which support the angle. So half the sum would be the measure. Now, how can we do it? All right, let's do it this way. Let me wipe out the central angles and switch to inscribed angles. It would be easier. And then I will use the fact that the central is twice as, as big as, as uh, inscribed. All right, so let's just connect these two things, these two points. Uh, let's call this point M, where two chords intersect each other. Now, A, B prime, B is uh, an inscribed angle. And um, what we can say about this particular angle, which we are talking about, A, M, B. We know that angle A, M, B is exterior to a triangle A, B prime M. See, this is an exterior angle. And that's why it's equal to a sum of two angles not supplemental with it. So it's equal to sum of uh, A, B prime B plus B prime A, M. B prime angle, B prime A, M, or A prime, doesn't really matter. So sum of this angle and this angle is equal to this one, which we are looking to, to be measured. But now, let's just think about A, B prime B, is an inscribed angle which is supported by this arc AB. And B prime A A prime, B prime A A prime is actually an inscribed angle which is supported by this arc. So that's why this angle is equal to one half of Let's call this point O. This is a center. So uh, angle A, O, B, the central corresponding angle, which is supported by the same arc. And this angle is equal to one half of a corresponding central angle, which, support, which is supported by this arc, which is B prime O, A prime or A prime or B prime, same thing. And that's exactly what needs to be, to be proven, that this particular angle, which is formed by two chords uh, intersecting each other and supported by these two arcs, is equal to half the sum of the corresponding central angle supported by the same arcs. That's it. So this is just a, a tiny bit more complicated case than just inscribed angles. All I was using is the theorem that exterior angle of a triangle is equal to sum of uh, interior angles not supplemented uh, with it. Now, these are two chords which are intersecting inside a circle. And that's why you have half sum of the corresponding uh, angles, central angles supported by the same arcs. Now, what if these chords do not cross each other inside a circle and they are intersecting outside? So this is A A prime, this is B B prime. And this is the angle which we would like to measure. So right now, actually the theorem is exactly the same, but instead of adding two central angles which are supported by the same arcs, we really have to subtract 
and here is y. So let's forget for a second about the center. Let's just connect these two points. And again, this is an exterior angle to A prime M B triangle, which means it's equal to uh, sum of this angle plus this angle. So the angle A, A prime B, this one, is equal to a sum of angles A, M, B plus this one, A prime, B, B prime. Now, the angle we are looking for is this one. Now, just solve this particular equation uh, for a and B, so you will have A and B equals to the difference between angle A, A prime B minus angle A prime B, B prime. Well, this actually concludes the whole, the whole proof, because A, A prime B, A, A prime B is an inscribed angle which is supported by this arc. Which means, uh, I, I will not even write it down, which means it's equal to half of the central angle which is uh, supported by the same arc. Now, the angle A prime B B prime, A prime B B prime, is inscribed, which is supported by this arc, and again, it's equal to half of the central angle which is supported by the same arc. So our angle which we are looking for A and B is equal to half the difference between the corresponding central angles, which are supported by the same arcs, which are cut out from the from the circle. In in a way, it, it's really very similar to the previous uh, uh, theorems. If chords are intersecting insides, is half the sum of the central angles, uh, which are supported by the same arcs. If they are intersecting outside then it's half the difference between the corresponding central angles. So you might actually remember it this way. All right, so these are two very much related theorems to each other. They're all based on the fact that the measure of an inscribed angle is always half of the corresponding central, which is supported by the same arc. These are just small complications to that particular theorems. They're used much much rarer, but again, our purpose is not to provide you with any practical knowledge, just to exercise the brain. Okay, let's go further. Angle between a tangent and a chord originated in a point where... Okay, okay, here it is. You have a, a circle, you have a tangent, and you have a chord in which... which has an endpoint exactly where uh, the tangent touches the circle. Now, as you remember, the radius, which is drawn in the same point where the tangent touches the, the circle, is perpendicular to this tangent. That's the uh, main property of the tangent. Now, what's necessary to prove is uh, if you put letters A and B and O here, okay. All right, so this is the arc which corresponds to this particular chord. So the theorem states that this particular angle is measured as half of the central angle which is supported by the same arc uh, related to the chord. So you have a chord and in the end point you have a tangent and you are measuring the angle between the a chord and the tangent. Now this particular arc is related to the chord 
and the theorem states that this angle is half of this angle. Now, how can that be proven? Well, again, let's just use the fact that the radius is perpendicular to um, the tangent, which means that this particular angle, which we are looking for, well, let's call it alpha, this alpha is equal to 90 degree minus beta. That's obvious, because this is the perpendicular. Now, AOB is isosceles triangle, because these are two radiuses, so this is also beta. Okay. Now, what can we say after that? If I will draw a perpendicular to a chord, let's call it C, then angle AOC AOC it's uh, the right triangle, if this is beta, so this one is 90 minus beta, which is alpha. Right? Because alpha is 90 minus beta. So angle AOC is equal to alpha. Well, obviously AOC is half of AOB, because these are equal uh, 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 congruent right triangles, which means this is also an angle alpha. And that basically concludes the proof that this particular angle is equal to half the central angle, which is supported by the same. This is alpha and this is alpha, so this is 2 alpha, and that's why it's twice as big as this one. And the proof. As you see, these proofs are really very, very easy as long as you um, understand um, just a small thing. For instance, just draw an extra line which connects a couple of points, or drop a perpendicular to a chord in this particular case, and everything actually immediately becomes, you know, quite obvious because the whole, you know, proof was in one line or two lines. So that's really very easy. But what's really interesting is you have to know what additional construction, what line to draw. Uh, what perpendicular to drop, uh, which two, two points to, to connect, to really make the whole theorem quite obvious. So that's the most important part of it. Next. Among all chords that contain certain point inside a circle, the shortest is the one perpendicular to a radius that contains this point. Okay, so you have a circle, this is the center, uh, and this is a chosen point inside. Now, what this particular theorem says is that this chord, nah, it's not a good drawing, I'm sorry. I think this would be better. Okay, so this is the radius. This is AB. This is O, let's say M. So, and this is the point P through which all the chords are actually drawn. So if you take any other chord, let's say A prime, B prime, which is not perpendicular to OP, it would be longer than AB. So, the shortest chord, which is, uh, which contains a particular point inside a circle, is the one which is perpendicular to a radius which goes through this point. In this case, it's OM. So, P is a given point, and to draw a shortest chord through this point, you have to draw a radius, and then the perpendicular chord to this radius. Okay. Now, let's think about how to prove it. Uh, okay, 
uh, I'll probably change slightly the letter so it will correspond to whatever I have on the on the web. So this is a point M. Okay. Uh, a B the chord perpendicular. That's right. It's perpendicular to all M. Um, and a prime B prime is another chord which is not perpendicular to to O M. So A prime B prime is not perpendicular to O M. Okay. Um, now what we do is we drop a perpendicular from the center to this new chord. Okay. Let's call this A M, M prime. So O M is perpendicular to um, a B, O M prime is perpendicular to A prime B prime. Now, we know that um, the uh, radius which is perpendicular to a chord uh, divides it in, in half. It, it's a perpendicular bisector. So basically A prime M prime is congruent to M prime B prime as well as AM is congruent to MB. OM prime is perpendicular to this chord, or M is perpendicular to this chord. Okay, fine. That's done. What's next? Uh, now, let's consider the triangle OM prime M. It's a right triangle, and OM is uh, a hypotenuse, which means OM is greater than OM prime because OM prime is a catheter and OM is a hypotenuse. Now, so what kind of a picture we have here? We have two chords. One of them is closer to the center than another. And as we have learned, uh, from one of the previous lectures, one of the previous theorems actually, I think it was mini theorem one, the closer the chord to the center, the longer it is. So A prime, B prime is closer to the center than OM, because OM prime is, it is smaller than OM. That's why A prime, B prime, therefore, A prime, B prime is greater than AB. So you just have to remember that previous theorem that the, the, the shorter the distance from a chord to a center, the distance being perpendicular, obviously, the longer the chord is. And uh, what element of a circle has the shortest distance to the center? Well, obviously a diameter. So if you draw a diameter, it doesn't really matter whether it's from this point or not. The diameter has a zero length to the center. That's the shortest as it can be. And therefore, the diameter is the longest. That's the longest chord. OK. That, that's the end for this particular problem. Now, what was interesting in this particular problem, what was important um, to, to, to lead us to a conclusion? Well, number one, a small construction which we made, just the perpendicular to a, a prime, b prime. And what's also important is always remember what was before, because the whole building of mathematics is built from the ground up, so you know certain things and you can use it on the next floor. In this case, we were using this theorem that the closer chord to the center, the, sh the, the longer it is. Okay. Theorem number five. Given a circle with a center O and core AB. Center O and chord AB. Okay. On equal distance on both sides from the midpoint M of this chord. So this is the midpoint, and probably this is, as we know, a perpendicular, because the perpendicular bisector is actually crossing um, midpoint of, of the chord and goes through the center. Okay, so on equal uh, lengths from both sides of M, 
inside a circle which is two points C and D on equal side, on equal lengths. Let's say this and this. C and D. We choose two points. Okay. At each of these points we draw perpendiculars to chord AB. From C we call it CE and from D we call it DF. Okay, prove that segments CE and DF are congruent. So these two are supposed to be congruent. All right, so how can we prove that? Let me first do a simpler task. Let's say our chord is not just any chord, but a diameter. It would be a little bit easier in this case. Now, from the diameter, on the diameter, we have two points on equal distance from the center. By the way, M and the center O are coinciding right now, right? We draw perpendiculars. Now, It's quite obvious that CE and DF are congruent because CM and MD are congruent for, uh, by, uh, by the premise of the theorem, by the condition, because we actually use the same distance on both sides of M. And these are radiuses. So we have two right triangles which uh, have um, congruent catheters and hypotenuse. And that's why they are congruent, and that's why D, e and D, uh, uh, D F, and C, E are um, congruent to each other. So that's easy. Now, how can we reduce this to this? Well, simply, let's draw a diameter. PQ parallel to a chord. So diameter is parallel to the chord. Now, it's obvious that um, CD, let's call these uh, K and L. CD, L, K is rectangle. Why? Because these are parallel to each other. These are parallel to each other because they're perpendicular to the same line AB. And obviously since they are perpendicular, these are right angles. So CGLK is a rectangle, which means that this piece is equal to this piece. Now, this part is exactly like this because these two segments obviously are uh, congruent to each other because again these are all parallel lines these are equal so these are equal so basically we have reduced our problem to two simpler ones first that these particular pieces of the segments are congruent to each other because these are opposite sides of a rectangle and these two pieces are congruent to each other because we could just prove it for that case uh, a second ago. So some of these and some of these would be congruent to each other. So what's the lesson to, to learn from this particular task? Well, the complicated task can be reduced to two simpler ones, right? So by drawing the, the diameter parallel to a chord, I have basically broken two big segments into different in, into two parts each and proved the theorem for these two parts separately and then just sum them, sum them together. Okay. Next.
two chords are perpendicular to diameter. Okay, so you have diameter C, C prime. Uh, so we have chord A, B, no, A, A prime, sorry, A, A prime, and B, B prime. Let me check if that's exactly what this is. is. A C A prime. No, that's the other way around. I'm sorry. It's not this diameter. They're supposed to be perpendicular, not parallel. My fault. Diameter is this. C C prime, right? A, C, A prime, B prime, C prime, and B. Now it's correct. Okay. So two chords are perpendicular to a end. This is the center. Consider a segment that contain, connects midpoints of A, B prime and a prime B. This is a midpoint and this is a midpoint. Prove that it's also uh, perpendicular to the same diameter. Okay, that's quite interesting actually. There are many ways to prove this particular theorem. But here is what I suggest. Let's just consider this diameter as an axis of symmetry. Is the picture symmetrical? Well, let's just think about it. Since a diameter perpendicular to a chord is a perpendicular bisector, A and A prime are symmetrical relative to C, C prime. Same thing, B, B prime are symmetrical. Now, if these points are symmetrical and these points are symmetrical, then the segments which connect these points are symmetrical as well. Therefore, their midpoints are symmetrical as well. And since they are symmetrical, the line which connects them is perpendicular to the diameter. The diameter is actually a perpendicular bisector of this particular segment which connects the midpoints. So I have approach from a symmetry standpoint. That's an interesting approach. I guarantee that it can be actually solved differently using some um, congruent triangles and basically using the same principle of symmetry but behind the scene and not really mentioning this. Uh, because what is a symmetry? Symmetry is perpendicular and equal in length, right? That's what A and A prime symmetrical means. They are on the same perpendicular to C, C prime and on equal distance. Now, from this, you can obviously um, derive, for instance, uh, congruence of this triangle and this triangle, two right triangles, and stuff like this. So, basically, it's the same thing. I have just shortened the way to explain all these problems by using a little bit more complex uh, concept of symmetry. But anyway, it's quite, quite a legitimate way to, to, to prove the theorem, as long as you know that the corresponding points all are symmetrical to each other. So what have I used? If one point is symmetrical to another point, and the third point is symmetrical to the fourth point, then the segment which is connecting, which is connecting uh, these points are symmetrical as well, which is kind of a trivial symmetrical problem. All right. Um, 
we can argue about uh, rigorousness of this particular proof, but it's kind of obvious that it can be made rigorous if we will just open up the concept of symmetry and uh, prove each particular component of that concept, the perpendicularity and the equal distance, etc. All right, next. Given a circle with center O and chord AB. Uh, continue AB by BC equal to radius. So this is the radius, this is the radius, and we continue to BC, so the BC is equal to radius. Well, whenever you see something like this, the isosceles triangle, you know, it just comes to my mind immediately. As soon as you have these two segments equal with a common uh, vertex, most likely something will be necessary uh, to, con to consider like OBC as an isosceles triangle. But anyway, let's see whether I'm right or wrong. I know it's just my intuition. Um, draw a second from C through a center of a circle. C through a center. A second. Okay, so we are crossing the whole thing. All right. I was almost right. Um, this second intersects a circle at point D, which is further from C, and E, which is closer to C. Prove that angle AOD, AOD, which is a central angle, is three times greater than ACG, than ACD. All right, how can we prove that? So this is supposed to be three times greater than this. Well, as I was saying, OBC is isosceles triangle, and that's why this is uh, these two angles are equal to each other. So that's obvious, right? Okay, what's next? Well, recall that if you have two chords which are intersecting outside of a circle, then the measure of this angle is half the difference uh, between central angles which are supporting these two arcs. One arc is AD, another arc is BE. So basically, let's call this angle alpha. So alpha can be measured as one half of a central angle which is angle AOD minus central angle BOE. But it's also alpha, right? I mean, half of alpha, I'm sorry. I see something is not exactly right. Half of alpha. So, again, this angle is measured as half the difference between two central angles. One central angle is our AOD, and another central angle is same alpha because they are in in this in the isosceles triangle and two angles at base. Well let's just look at this. Obviously if you multiply it by two, you will have two alpha equals to AOD minus alpha from which 3 alpha is equal to AOG, and that's exactly what's necessary to prove. Simple, isn't it? So all you have to know is the theorem which was learned before about this angle between two chords intersecting outside of a circle, 
measured as half of the uh, central angle supported by the same arcs. Okay, that's the end of it. And the last problem I have in this lecture, given a, a circle with a center O and point M outside of this circle, okay, circle with a center O and point M outside of this circle. All right. Consider all seconds that contain point M and intersect circle in two points. Okay, this is one in the second. One closer to M and one further. So let's say this is P and Q. So the P is closer intersection point with the circle to M and Q is further. All right. Prove that a second that contains a center, which is this second, well, let's call this P prime, Q prime, and these will be P and Q. So it's necessary to prove that among all the different seconds which are originated at M, the second which goes through a circle has the closest point, has the closer point of intersection, closest among all other, and the further point of intersection, furthest among all other. So MQ is greater than MQ prime but MP is less than MP prime. So that's what's necessary to prove. MQ is greater than MQ prime, and MP is less than MP prime. So that's what's necessary to prove. Okay. Now, how can we prove it? Well, um, remember the uh, triangle inequality? If you have three points, then the sum of distances along the angular line is greater than the straight line which connects these two points. This is called triangle um, inequality. We will use it in this particular case. How? Very simply. Let's just connect these two points. Think of the line at, at the segment MQ. Since OQ and OQ prime are two radiuses, MQ is equal to MO plus, and instead of this radius, I will use this, OQ prime. This plus this. Now, obviously, since this is angular connection between M and Q prime, and MQ prime is a straight line, this would be greater than MQ prime because of a triangle inequality. So that's how we prove the first one. Now, the second one is very similar. O P prime M, O P prime plus P prime M is greater than O M, which can be represented as O P plus P M. But OP prime and OP are congruent to each other. So we can take out from this inequality and we will have that P prime M is greater than PM. P prime M is greater than PM. And that's the second one. 
which is necessary to prove. That's it. Okay, that concludes my series of mini theorems number two. Number two, there will be others uh, dedicated to circles. Um, so, as I'm saying, there will be other mini theorems, there will be other problems which are also um, related to circles. And circles are really uh, quite an interesting object. There are many very interesting problems um, to train your curiosity, which I can provide. Um, everything will be obviously on the website, on the unizor.com. Um, you are encouraged to spend as much time as you want on this website, and obviously uh, very important for parents who want their children to, well, succeed in developing of their creativity and uh, other great uh, qualities of the character. Please don't hesitate, um, enroll your children into different programs, let them take exam, control them, control their progress, control their educational uh, experience. Um, so everybody is welcome to unizor.com. That concludes my lecture for today. Thank you very much.